And so the question is, can we put anything across the relative line? And there's a quarter of a million kids. Now look at the red zone. Anything below zero. And my best news for you this morning is there's hardly anything that you do that harms kids. <laughs> You'd never know that from the media, though, would you? And quite a few of that stuff in the red zone makes perfect sense. For example, the effect size of bullying on achievement is minus 0.2. Very sensible. And when you take those into consideration, 95 to 97% of things that we do to kids enhances their learning. All you need to enhance learning is a pulse. <laughs> and this is why every teacher can argue they can enhance learning, because virtually everyone can. That's why every politician who went to bed last night, woke up in the middle of the night, didn't watch the American TV, but come up with a brand new idea for education. It will work. That's why every parent could come to your school here and tell you how to run your school. They are right. And this is what's killing us as a profession. And this is why so many people ignore you. Because you get up and say, look, I can enhance kids' learning. Well, everyone can. We've got to stop asking what works. We've got to stop the testimonial porn saying, watch me. I'm interested in the blue zone. How is it different from the yellow zone? And that's why I spent 20 years writing that book, to understand better the story. Yeah, in the first book I produced a league table. I'm trying to find the right spot in the room to stand where I'm not echoing. Have I found, maybe I should come over here. That better? Right. I did come up with that league table. And one of the mistakes is people look at the top and say, I'm doing those things, I'm not doing those things. That's the wrong message. It's not each individual one of them. It's the overlap. And what is that story about the overlap? And I spent so much time trying to come up with explanations and didn't fit with the data, I had to throw it out, etc., etc. And I think I'm in a reasonable position now. And in fact, over the last 10 or 15 years since I published the story, what I find fascinating is no one has questioned and come up with a different story. And that's what we do in this business. Yeah, people have bitched at some of the numbers and people get upset when I add more dimensions to it, etc., etc. But that's not the problem. And it's that story that matters between the blue zone and the yellow zone. And look at the blue zone. When I look at England, and I know you're not where you want to be in Pisa, but the good news is there's about 130 countries behind you, so you're in not a bad shape. I think I can say with some confidence that 60 to 70% of teachers and schools in England are in the blue zone. Success is all around us. And one of the major messages of the visible learning story is that we have to have that courage to recognise that success, to esteem that expertise, build a coalition around that expertise and then invite those in the yellow zone to join. And certainly the message is very, very strong that in many cases all visible learning does is provides permission to continue what you're doing. But if you're in the yellow zone, I'm sorry, you can't continue what you're doing. You have no right to have autonomy to teach as you wish. You must change. And it's a very important consideration how you build the trust in a school for that to happen. And that's what we're doing. And certainly one of the challenges I'd put to you in the room here today where are you? And I'm sorry, if you don't know, you could be doing incredible damage or you could be incredibly successful. And certainly one of the things that bothers the heck out of me with school leaders is so often they come into a school and they want to change. And I've seen some schools in the blue zone who have been systematically destroyed because they're focused on how you teach, not on the impact of your teaching. And so my message is, Incredible amount of success. We know a lot about that story. But that's not the main message of today. You're going to have to go and read a book, and all good libraries have good books on them, and the bad news is I'm still keeping them coming. 
about the story, but I want to move and place that in the context. And the numbers aren't that critical. Yes, it's not too difficult to work out an effect size. It's not the point today. It's the relativity. And I want you to think, just for the moment, that 0.4 is the average. Let me give you another explanation for it, just to put it in context. Putting the visible learning stuff aside for a moment. My background is I'm a statistician, I'm a measurement person. That's my training, that's what I've done in my whole career. Quite frankly, visible learning was a hobby until it took over about seven or eight years ago. I work in the measurement community. So I have done an analysis of your SATs. I have looked at the no child left behind in the, in the United States. I've taken the EASTL from New Zealand. I've taken all the data from NAPLAN in Australia over the last many years to ask the question, what's the typical effect size of kids as they grow from one year to the other? Now, across all those countries, across all those years, anyone have an idea what the average effect size is? Yeah, it's exactly point. Four zero. So, those of you in the blue zone, your kids are getting greater than a year's growth for a year's input. And I think that is to be celebrated. That is what I say to all politicians. And about three years ago, I actually joined the dark side. Even though I have an academic job in Australia, I also have a political job. Australia has an organisation called the Australian Institute for Teaching and Learning Standards and I'm the cabinet appointee chair of that. And our job, wow, this is grandiose, I'm in charge of the quality of teachers, school leaders, and teacher education across the country. And I have a lot of access to politicians and senior people. And I say to every single one of them, in the term of your office, and I've said it to your various ministers that I've met over the last four or five years, in the term of your office, it should be a badge of courage that you never go to Finland, Shanghai, or Singapore. Have you got the courage to recognise the success here in England right now? Reliably identify it. Listen to what is happening there in terms of the impact they're having on kids. And scale that up. Surely it's not that difficult. But one of the problems, educators, I need you to help me. You've got to stop saying, I can enhance kids' learning, because everyone can. You've got to start saying, I have the evidence that I'm in the blue zone. 